evening, everyone. While the uh, slideshow is being set up, I would just like to say thank you to all the organizers of uh, TEDx and IA for this fantastic event. Um, thank you for the opportunity for participating. Okay, um, my name is Tony Robinson. I am an activist in the humanist movement, which means that for the last 26 years, I have been using nonviolent tools for personal and social transformation in order to tackle all the different forms of violence that exist uh, in the world, which cause human beings so much pain and suffering. Things like physical violence, economic violence, psychological violence, etc. I am a director of a news agency, Presenza, which publishes news which focuses on peace and nonviolence, human rights, disarmament, and uh, the fight against discrimination. And I'm also a member of the uh, Global Council of a network called Abolition 2000, which is uh, a network of more than 2,000 organizations which campaign for nuclear disarmament. And nuclear weapons are going to be my a theme, theme for this talk because more or less now, 70 years ago uh, on, uh, on Japan, the second nuclear bomb was dropped on the city of Nagasaki. Together with the first bomb which was dropped on the 6th of August, there were between 150 and 200,000 people who lost their lives from the force of the bomb, from the uh, firestorm, that continued thereafter, from the uh, radiation poisoning that they suffered, from cancers later on in life, and even more sadly for the second and third generation survivors, cancers also caused as a result of mutations to the DNA as a result of the radiation. In many ways this is a tragedy that need not have happened. Historians now have a lot more information about what was happening at the end of the war. And it seems uh, much more likely that the, so uh, the Soviet Union entry in the war on the 8th of August was the thing that forced the Japanese high command to meet on the 9th of uh, August in order to decide to, to, uh, to surrender. There's a very good book called The Five Myths of uh, Nuclear Weapons by uh, an American author, Ward, Ward Wilson, which I recommend uh, you, you read. Um, today, the situation of nuclear weapons is that, according to the statistics you like, there are between 15 and 20,000 of them, divided by nine countries who possess them, the United States, Russia, the UK, France, China, India and Pakistan, North Korea and Israel. There are five other countries who host American weapons, Belgium, Holland, Italy, Germany and Turkey. And NATO countries and Japan, South Korea and Australia benefit from what they call a nuclear, nuclear umbrella, which means that if they're threatened with nuclear attack, then the USA will step in and protect them with their nuclear weapons. All we have now is very old black and white footage from 70 years ago of the effects of nuclear weapons. And that nuclear, those nuclear weapons that fell on Japan were, were very small in comparison to the ones that are available today. So let's look at the situation of what would happen if a, if a bomb would fall on the city of New York. Well, a typical size bomb would, for the first three kilometers, uh, destroy everything, vaporize everything, as the temperatures would rise to higher than the surface of the sun. Everything would immediately be vaporized. For the next three kilometers, everything would be destroyed. The force of the explosion would be such that there would be no chance for anything to survive. In the following three kilometers, because of the temperatures, everything that can burn, everything that can bust, will immediately do so. Further out from that, there would obviously be fires, there would be uh, damage caused by the effects of the force of the blast. And in a city like New York, which has uh, a lot of people coming into it to work every day, it could mean uh, a death of anything up to three million people with one weapon. 
Now, a war doesn't typically happen with one weapon. And climate scientists have been studying what could be the effect of a very small exchange of 100 weapons. And they've taken an example of a, a small war between India and Pakistan. Well, 100 bombs would eject enough dust, smoke and particles into the atmosphere to cause a nuclear winter. Global temperatures would drop. The growing seasons for the crops would be reduced drastically all through the northern hemisphere. Crops would fail. And it's estimated that between one and two billion human beings would die as a result of famine. In addition, we know that uh, nuclear power stations are not immune from natural disasters, nor would they be, be the immune from um, a nuclear war. When nuclear power stations go without electricity and backup supply, their reactors melt down, they explode, and they inject tons of uh, radioactive toxic material into the atmosphere. This would leash, unleash a wave of cancer which has not been seen since the time of Chernobyl. Yes. We somehow think that maybe at the end of this, the Cold War, the threat of nuclear weapons died, that there was no more problem of nuclear weapons. And it's not true, it's a present danger. We know that throughout the Cold War there were many times when the, uh, the two nuclear superpowers almost came to the point of launching nuclear weapons at each other. Uh, and only by the, uh, by the decisions made by junior officers were seniors not informed, and therefore the d decision to, take, uh, t to launch a bomb at the other side was not taken. We know of accidents also where planes have fallen out of the sky loaded with nuclear weapons and it's only as a result of luck that there was no nuclear detonation. Of, uh, an area of Spain was uh, contaminated with uranium in, in the 60s. Uh, two bombs dropped on, on North Carolina in the States. But today's threats are a bit more sinister as well because we know that nations are spending millions of dollars on cyber warfare, they're trying to hack into each other's computer systems. And we know also that, that terrorists are working to, to try and get hold of nuclear material. There's a very, very interesting case in uh, America last year where an 84-year-old nun and two colleagues was able to break into a nuclear weapon factory and instead of doing any particular damage in terms of it stealing material or letting off bombs, they just painted graffiti on the walls. It's time to eliminate these weapons before they eliminate us. And there is a legal framework in which it should take place. It's called the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. It's a treaty that was signed in 1970, and it uh, committed the parties to disarm their nuclear weapons, to ensure that no new countries got hold of nuclear weapons and to ensure that everyone had the right to nuclear energy. The treaty had a 25-year lifespan, so by 1995 disarmament should have happened across the world. It didn't, so they convened a, convened a conference and they agreed that they would extend the treaty on the condition that there would be a zone free of nuclear weapons created in the Middle East. We are now 20 years on from that. There is no disarmament. There is no zone free of nuclear weapons in the Middle East. Proliferation has taken place to new countries. And nuclear energy has turned out to be the most poisonous and toxic way of creating energy known to man. Nuclear weapon states refuse to disarm their, their arsenals, claiming that they need their deterrent, even though uh, history shows that nuclear weapons are no, no deterrence at all. Uh, I just take the example of the United Kingdom. When Argentina invaded the Falkland Islands, Argentina wasn't deterred in the slightest from the fact that Great Britain had nuclear weapons. And in fact, states are modernizing their arsenals. The USA plans to spend one 
That's one trillion, that number there, one trillion dollars over the next 10 years. But it's not all doom and gloom because there is a campaign to abolish nuclear weapons. It's called the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons. And it's been working over the last year, focusing nations' attention on the humanitarian impacts of, of these weapons. 113 nations have now signed a pledge to identify and pursue effective measures to fill the legal gap for the prohibition and elimination of nuclear weapons. ICANN proposes that there is a need for a treaty, to, uh, a ban treaty, to ban them. All other forms of, all other weapons of mass destruction have treaties to ban them. Nuclear weapons don't. And a ban treaty could be, could be signed by uh, and negotiated by anyone, even if they had nuclear weapons or not. So it would allow all of the countries without nuclear weapons to make a start on pushing international, um, putting pressure on governments to disarm. Um, conclusion is the world is a very complicated place people are affected by all kinds of crises you know this well in Greece more than, more than many other places however there are two threats which hang over humanity and have the possibility to make us all extinct one is climate change and one is nuclear war it's time for all countries of the world, including Greece, to take the steps to eliminate nuclear weapons once and for all. And I leave you all with a video by the, uh, by the campaign to abolish nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons are not someone else's problem. Their destructive power is so vast that its effects won't stop at national borders. Human beings will be the target and cities will be annihilated. Humanitarian relief organizations admit that there is little they could do to help the survivors of a nuclear detonation. Nuclear weapons continue to be a global humanitarian threat. They require a united global response. Injustice is never someone else's problem. That's what Nelson Mandela understood as he suffered in prison for all those years. A society needs to be based on inclusion and human rights, not divided by the color of one's skin. Our task, of course, is not an easy one, but no one's ending apartheid in South Africa. Through perseverance, conviction and determination, we defeated the forces of injustice and hatred. We won because we stood on the right side of history. We stood for a just and moral cause. And you too stand on the right side of history. Change does not happen overnight. It is a long road that needs vision, courage, and commitment. But change needs a starting point, a moment of truth when we rise up and demand what is long overdue. That's what feminists in many countries did by campaigning for women's right to vote. By claiming their rights, those women rejected the status quo and called it for what it was, oppression. Progress often means changing the rules. It was outrage about the effects of anti-personal landmines that fueled the work of the international campaign to ban landmines. Hundreds of thousands of civilians were killed or maimed by these indiscriminate weapons. Cities, villages and farmland became battlefields and fear walked with every man, woman and child wherever landmines had been used. 
Within five years, we took an issue that nobody was talking about and achieved a ban. And then what was so important about our work then was that we, we took a weapon that had been in use for generations and, and we changed the framework of discussion. We turned it into an issue of humanitarian disarmament. When we were really excited and celebrating the, the successful negotiation of the Mine Ban Treaty, and then in Ottawa, Canada in December of 97, 122 countries coming together in two days to join that treaty, we were often kind of assaulted, if you will, by the media saying the U.S. isn't there, Russia isn't there, China isn't there. Doesn't that make your treaty irrelevant? And our response was, of course not. How can you say that 122 nations signing a treaty is irrelevant? More and more nations are facing up to the horrifying evidence of what nuclear bombs actually do. Governments and civil society are shaking off years of complacency and changing the game. We are calling nuclear weapons for what they really are, inhumane, useless and unacceptable. Now, we need to have the courage to take the next step and develop a treaty that makes nuclear weapons illegal. We are closer than you might think. And we will pursue this treaty, even if the nuclear armed countries oppose it. We will have the courage to ask every political leader in the world, are nuclear weapons acceptable or are they not? We are confident that the vast majority will agree that they should be outlawed and will work with us towards a ban. Every generation has a chance to change the world. This is the generation that will ban nuclear weapons forever.